Hello, this is Alkesh Nanavati again. Um, we're going to move on from that uh, introductory video and finish this uh, comp and uh, go through the whole um, shot. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, all of those who have uh, subscribed to my channel. I um, appreciate that and I hope that the content that I'm delivering here is uh, up to your expectations and uh, obviously it's relevant to you. Thanks again. So here are the two images that you have seen. Um, same location, two different uh, angles of the camera and two different exposure settings as you can see here. This building doesn't look as dark as this one. Um, so we'll, we'll look at those things and, um, and move from there. So let's look at first the, um, the, the planning process as to you know, what do we need to do here. Um, so here are the two images and I have very roughly combined them and you will see more precise combination inside of Maya because you need to uh, uh, work with 3D space um, rotation around X. So one image would be slightly you know, going in this direction. Okay, so here are the two images and, and what I envision first of all is to have a camera move. So, so this is where the initial stage is, right? So this is where it starts. Then it goes up in the air this way, and then it comes down again in the other, on the other side of this building. So it's capturing more of this area here. You know, the um, the initial is um, is uh, this is your field of view here, maybe a little bit more on this side, um, and then it's uh, going from there to here and then down below. Now all along, there's something else is happening. In front of this building, there will be a um, uh, a hunter killer, right? So hunter killer is uh, that machine that you have seen in Terminator. These are the flying machines, sort of shape like this, um, and there are two wings here, one and one on the other side, and they have these thrust engines on each side and one in the back. You know that's keeping it in the elevation. So this is going to be flying up as the camera is going up and then it will end up somewhere here let me just make a quick representation of hunter killer here right so it will end up here and the camera will continue down to go into the third position but while this is happening one thing that we need to be mindful about is that this should also cast a, um, a reflection of this image inside this building so if we quickly uh, make a representation of that it should be something like this and that's the, uh, the the reflected image of of this image and it should also rise you know as this is rising on the other side it should also rise and go I guess outside the uh, the, the glass panels so so here you would not see any reflection because there are no glasses here but in in this glass certainly we should show the reflection of both the um, engines or the flames and the geometry itself and, and there is a very interesting workflow around that uh, using the 3d space of fusion that we'll go through it's similar to um, how reflection work was done in Iron Man if you have seen the movie every time when you see Iron Man inside his suit and he is reading all the information displaying on his HUD uh, head-up display uh, there is a reflection of what he's seeing into his eyes and and this is the technique that was used um, and, and I'll walk you through uh, you know just very quickly as to how that was done so we'll use the same technique in fusion um, Iron Man was done using nuke I believe and uh, we are just going to use fusions 3d space to achieve the same result so that's going to be interesting then this hunter killer itself is going to have a metallic uh, body so you will see um, building reflections and the sky reflections and everything happening also uh, on the body of um, uh, of this uh, machine. Uh, there's going to be a lot of explosions um, at different areas. Um, there are going to be some pre-existing explosions and, and some smoke happening uh, in, in different areas again. And yeah, that probably is going to be the full extent of the shot we'll have um, obviously because this is a 3d space we'll we'll have a uh, fog casting from far end to the closer end so you will see um, 
buildings and, and more importantly the water disappearing in the uh, in the fog um, we'll use uh, 3d fog for that uh, from inside fusion we are also going to relight the scene in fusion so all these um, uh, shadows that you see here you will see similar shadows of these machines maybe not this particular one but the ones that are uh, making damage here certainly you will see the shadow of that you will also see shadow of any debris or any uh, any cloud that is forming here as a result of explosion onto the building because you know that the sun is coming from this direction here just looking at you know where this building is and where the uh, where the shadow is casted on off that building on the other building so we'll keep all those things uh, in mind and uh, we'll try to replicate that uh, pattern or the behavior of uh, light also with uh, respect to this new geometry right so uh, enough for that for now let's uh, go over to fusion again and see what the end result would uh, look like so let's just uh, look at the uh, the first frame so here we are as uh, as I indicated the uh, camera is much closer to the ground here you know looking at um, everything that's uh, visible in the field of view you have reflection as I was mentioning of the uh, hunter killer here inside the uh, inside the building and as it goes through you can see that the hunter killer is rising and and without even having hunter killer in field of view you can see its motion uh, coming up in uh, in the reflection and the reflection goes away as it rises above the um, uh, the windows area and you can see buildings uh, reflected here onto the uh, uh, metallic surface of of the machine as it goes up you see clouds reflected here also on uh, on top of the uh, uh, body here and there are uh, building reflections again going on in this part of the uh, engines there are flames here um, created inside of fusion this geometry was built in Maya and exported into fusion uh, as FBX model and it is fully in 3d space of fusion itself uh, and then this particles were integrated with this uh, geometry um, you see that particles also have, uh, let me just expand so you can uh, have a better view here. You can see that uh, this particles also has some heat haze going on around there. So if you uh, move the, uh, the frames here, you can see um, there is a displacement going on of the building in the back. And that's because of the heat. <coughs> so uh, th that was done in, um, uh, in, in Fusion as well. A um, lot of these particles here, the flame here was done in fusion, this streaks of smoke here and also there is a smoke um, going on here that's also inside of fusion. Um, then you have a lot of the explosions happening here as you will see um, as Hunter Killer flies by there. Um, here's a combination of uh, three software. Um, this puffy looking cloud that is developing here, that's in Maya. Uh, that's using the Maya 3D fluid um, system. The explosion itself that you see here with the streaks here, that was in combustion, uh, which is an old compositing software by Autodesk, um, combustion 2008. And then you have the laser beam that is actually hitting the uh, corner of this building was done in uh, fusion itself. So it's a combination there. Um, and you see the shadow is uh, is appearing as soon as this um, puffy cloud is developing. Um, and you see also that the uh, larger pieces here of concrete or the corner that are uh, breaking away from this building because of the force of um, the impact, they are going in this direction. And, and most likely um, they would hit this building here because this building is right across the street. And you will see that also happening here that uh, these chunky uh, pieces they are hitting the building and they're bouncing back right and uh, some of them some of them are actually coming on this side of the building so there's no uh, impact there but a lot of this uh, this um, uh, debris here they are you know reacting to the building and that was done using um, a DMM module inside of Maya using the real physics of uh, rigid body simulation so we'll walk through that um, and that it rises up because of still 
continuing with the momentum of the force and then eventually they will start to fall down right now so that was one impact here right that that you saw with that you also see that there is a shadow going on here in the back of this hunter killer and the shadow is stretched on the side of this building and then it becomes flat when it uh, comes on the front of the building um, you can see here this is stretched sh shadow and here it's you know becoming much more um, the uh, actual size shadow I guess and that was done in fusion uh, through the relighting system we were able to do that because um, the whole area was created in fusion in 3d so once you have that in 3d light will behave exactly how it would behave in real 3d environment and that's the reason why you're getting this stretch shadow and then flat shadow here uh, because of the uh, the geometry itself is there in uh, in fusion um, as it goes further uh, close to this building here you will see some shadow happening here also uh, let's see yeah you see that there is a line of shadow here that is um, probably coming from this part of the um, uh, of the machine uh, but you can see that it's uh, it's moving away you know with uh, with this machine and um, yeah so that's one and then there is a second machine that is uh, very rudely I would say coming through this area and not respecting the uh, the buildings you know it's not hitting any buildings by way of leisure or anything that these guns are still not firing anything but the side of the building the side of the um, uh, engine here is uh, hitting this part of the building and what it does it takes junk out and creating another puffy cloud and mass and all this um, shadow developing here um, and all these smaller pieces of uh, I guess concrete or debris you know is falling down um, yeah so so that's the complete shot and um, we'll go through how this was built from those two simple images uh, and using uh, some Photoshop, a uh, lot of Maya and a lot of um, uh, Fusion itself. Uh, it's quite involved process, um, e even if you keep it very simple. And you will see in the uh, in the next screen when I build up the um, the script itself. So let's take a look at that. Right. So um, these are different parts of the whole composition, and and we'll walk through each one of them. We'll start with uh, the FBX part because that's the uh, the base uh, that you need. That's the setup of the scene, setup of all the buildings uh, exactly where they were in the 3D space. Um, then we will also, um, and th this will be just the buildings, geometry, no texture or anything. Then we'll have texture applied to that by way of projections. And you see that there are two colors here and, and these two cameras are the same cameras that I used when I took the pictures that you saw earlier um, so these are exactly the same attributes in terms of the focal lengths and you know the uh, sensor size and everything uh, as my Panasonic GH2 um, and th they will cast uh, projections of respective images that they have um, onto this geometry to, uh, to complete the overall texturing process then um, we will have um, this particular node here will plan that which is the film camera and and we need to know how this camera is going to move just how we plan it here you know when uh, when you look at this camera move here that's exactly what we'll uh, build inside of um, fusion and, and show you you know how it was done um, and once you have that process done then obviously you will need to take this camera information inside of Maya because a lot of the particle work is done inside of Maya and you need to capture uh, if especially if you are bringing image sequences which this all is here uh, whether it's from Maya or from combustion uh, you will need the same camera inside of both software and um, what I did is uh, just exported this camera information through FBX process and then use that inside of um, uh, Maya um, and these here are the 200 killers with their uh, respective uh, um, particles for the engine flames and this is the FBX part of it 
uh, that only two even though you see 300 killers I reused one of them so um, and I could have probably used one over and over again but uh, you know I didn't think of that I guess uh, fast enough so one was already done second one was already done and then I said gee you know why do I need to build another one I you know so I used the animation of the second one then you have um, our famous uh, light wrap process to integrate uh, hunter killer uh, more into the building um, all the texturing will walk through here uh, which is the uh, metallic body and in the uh, image that it shows inside reflection um, this workflow here is the workflow about um, the building casting reflection of hunter killer uh, at the uh, first uh, 90 or 100 frames that I showed you this is the one that uh, I said that uh, I was inspired by um, uh, looking at some videos about how this was done for Iron Man 3 and, and I'll have both images here that I'll also show you um, very soon and then it goes through all these different nodes and masking and uh, it finally comes to this uh, this stage here um, so we'll walk through most of these nodes uh, some of them are very basic like color correction we're not gonna spend a lot of time all the orange nodes that you see here there is uh, one two three four five six seven eight and nine ten I guess all these ten orange nodes these are all intermediate renderings even though the whole thing is 3d and you can just wait until you know the last rendering here these are all intermediate because sometimes you need to um, have the sequence of image incorporated inside of uh, 3d composite perfect example is that if you have something coming down the pipe here that requires masking then you need to build the mask way ahead of time before you start building all the other things so you know I would have just uh, made a uh, kind of a detour or a diversion to have that part going and then I'll use it when I need it yeah so uh, so that's pretty much it uh, all the green lines that you see here these are all instancing inside of fusion so rather than recreating same node again I have uh, tried to use instance as much as possible two main benefits one it makes the whole composition uh, faster and more efficient uh, as there is less calculation required and the second thing is that if you make a change into one node all the other nodes will follow you know you don't need to individually go into the nodes to make changes and here's an example this is um, the camera move uh, the film camera I need that camera also to capture the reflection that is happening on the building so if I ever change this camera then I don't have to worry about whether this camera will also need to be changed or not right so that's the uh, overview of what we are going to go through in the next uh, two or three videos um, I'm going to stop here and uh, next video will start with Maya and see you know how this part the FBX geometry part was done um, in Maya before we uh, you know bring it into fusion again okay thanks a lot